In this video, I am going to introduce you to the four broad categories of indicators that we will use to analyze the financial statements of the company. The purpose of the analysis is to gauge the financial health of the company to identify whether any corrective measures are required to be taken. So having done the preparation of the final accounts, we are now going to make use of, we are going to learn to make use of the financial indicators to convert data into information from the point of view of various stakeholders. And the stakeholders as discussed earlier include uh, management, investors, creditors who lend money, uh, who supply resources to the business, government who is interested in knowing the uh, taxes that are paid by the company, employees and public. Every stakeholder has different kind of interest uh, in the company. So there are four types of ratios that we utilize. Now ratio simply refers to a number which is a division, division of two number. So these ratios are used as indicators. So ratios are used as indicators. For example, to check the temperature of the body, you measure the temperature using a thermometer and that thermometer gives you a temperature number. Likewise, you know, we are using these ratios as indicators uh, and they give us different types of information about the financial health of the company. Uh, so the ratios or the indicators are categorized into four. There are liquidity ratios, solvency ratios, profitability ratios and efficiency ratios. I'm going to spend a few minutes on each of these to introduce you to these uh, categories, these types of ratios. The first ratio, uh, the first category of ratios is called liquidity ratio. Now the term liquidity has a specific meaning in the world of accounting and finance. If you follow business news, you must have come across the this world uh, because, you know, the RBI or people from finance ministry or financial analysts frequently talk about markets being liquid, uh, there being not enough liquidity in the market or RBI has increased or decreased the rates to control the liquidity in the market. So the word liquidity has a specific meaning. And the liquidity uh, refers to the availability, uh, the availability of funds in the market. Liquidity refers to the cash in the market. So uh, in context of a specific company, a given company uh, for whom you are analyzing the financial health, the liquidity refers to the cash position of the business. What is the ability of the business, as uh, the slide says, how, how comfortably will the company be able to pay off its short term dues? The short term, uh, the, these two words are important here. So liquidity in the short term refers to having cash uh, or bank balance in hand to pay off your short term liabilities. Short term liabilities mean whatever is due in less than one year. Now imagine that you have money in the bank account, but the banks are closed on the weekend. You go to an ATM machine, but the machine is not working. You are out of cash. You may have lakhs of rupees in your bank account, but right now you are suffering. <clears throat> you are suffering from liquidity issues. Uh, so this is how we think about the term liquidity. Uh, the ability of the company to have the cash when it is required and the time frame for this is short run. So in the, um, you know, in the short run, who do you need to pay to? In the short run, you need to pay to your current liabil uh, liabilities, the people to whom the current liabilities are due. So these current liabilities need to be paid off and you need sufficient cash. So this is, uh, you know, a kind of analysis where we will look at uh, related terms to say whether a business is uh, going to easily meet its short term liabilities or not. Let's look at uh, the second category of ratios, another set of indicators which are called solvency. Now the solvency word, solvency has again a specific 
meaning in the world of accounting and finance and the more than solvency you would have heard uh, insolvency uh, this word because you know many banks have gone insolvent many companies have gone insolvent so insolvency basically means uh, your assets and liabilities are not matching typically the case is that assets value is less than the value of the liabilities which means accounting equation is not holding uh, which means there has been a mismanagement in the company and now uh, in order for you to be able to pay off your long term liabilities and now let me bring in this long term world so the long term liabilities cannot be paid off because you do not have sufficient cash that will be generated in the long run whenever you have to pay off the loan that you have taken from the bank you do not have the money or it is likely that you will not have the money or the position the likelihood of you having the money uh, is you know very small so in such case we say business is going insolvent the business will not be able to pay off its liability so you want to understand if the company is uh, going to be in a comfortable position or in a you know less comfortable position in terms of uh, its ability to pay uh, the long term dues so long term dues are the loans that the company takes in different forms you can take loans from uh, companies uh, sorry from the banks or you could take loans from uh, public uh, which are called you know, debentures or bonds as well uh, more advanced terms we'll discuss those uh, as we move along the idea is the long term loans are due in more than after uh, the after one year so uh, that's how we call them long term dues so these the first two indicators the liquidity ratios and solvency ratios they deal with a company's ability to pay off short term and the long term uh, liabilities the third category of uh, indicators are called profitability ratios the profitability ratios deal with questions such as uh, the you know what are the margins of the business how much returns you are making now profit as we understand is equal to the incomes minus the expenses now the incomes are operating incomes and non operating incomes the expenses can be direct expenses indirect expenses and indirect expenses can further be operating expenses and uh, non operating expenses so this categorization i hope you are now you know familiar with so different kinds of incomes and expenses are there and in profitability you're not just concerned about the final profit number that you have you're also concerned about profit at different levels if i take out only the operating expenses from my income how much do i make if i take out also the non operating expenses uh, you know which category of expenses is contributing how much to my total overall costs what are the major cost drivers what is affecting my profit there are number of in depth uh, you know uh, discussions that can be had on uh, understanding profit so profit can be defined in different ways you can talk about uh, you know gross profit and net profit is something that we have discussed but you know operating profit what is an operating profit uh, which means only talk about operating income and operating expenses and then there can be you know further more discussions on defining profit or expenses so profitability ratios are going to be dealing with uh, you know such kind of indicators which will uh, help us understand the ability of the business to generate money uh, generate more resources given that some resources have been invested the final category the fourth category of indicators is called efficiency ratios and efficiency as i earlier said in the previous video are about the input and output ratio how much are you able to invest and how much are you able to generate so uh, uh, from a company's point of view the resources that are uh, invested uh, are you know stock into the business you have uh, capital into the business you have you know fixed assets that are purchased and everything is done in order to generate sales in order to generate revenue so for every fixed asset how much sale is being generated you know those that kind of analysis are we investing in uh, productive fixed assets or are we producing in 
uh, you know, not so productive fixed assets. In the banking sector, there is a term called non-performing assets. These are the assets which are not paying you. If you bring that term to, you know, companies uh, from the banking sector, then there could be non-performing assets in the sense that, uh, you know, company can be uh, investing in setting up holiday homes for its employees, for its senior executives. So such assets are not contributing to generating sales, but are merely for employee welfare. So, you know, uh, you want to be, uh, you want to know uh, if the company is doing such unproductive investments in the fixed assets or, you know, other things. So uh, basically the idea is to say for per unit of, you know, resources which are being invested in the business, what is the output that we are generating? Are we being efficient in utilizing the resources in the business or not? So these are the four categories uh, of indicators uh, and for each of the categories there will be you know three to five or even you know there can be ten indicators within each of these four categories and that is what we are going to discuss going forward. I'll see you in the next video.